That's OpenAI's strategy. We are trying to deploy these systems continuously, but in a controlled way. Is your goal to replace humans without consideration of all the social implications or augment human capability? With GPT-3, we were convinced that misinformation was going to be the most important risk. Say a little bit about uh, OpenAI's approach, what kind of being this kind of n novel organization organized around a 501c3 and organizations like this, how, what you're trying to do to identify what safety is and how to create those norms both in your own action but also catalyzing other industries. As you know, our mission is to build a general system and figure out how to deploy that beneficially to the world. And, you know, there's just one word, but beneficially, but figuring out how to robustly do that is actually an immense challenge. Um, it's hard to predict the future. It is hard to predict all the ways in which these systems might uh, create mm, harmful biases or other risks that we can't even imagine. But at the very least, we can uh, try to get as much understanding as possible, uh, gather as much knowledge as possible, and leave the options open. And that's OpenAI's strategy. We are trying to deploy these systems continuously, but in a controlled way. Uh, that means an API. So GPT-3 was first deployed through an API to a small group of users, and then eventually we broaden up access as we understood how to get a good handle on the risks. Um, but I think it's really hard, and that's why that's actually part of the reason why we decided to deploy GPT-3. Because if you are in the research lab, you may think, this is going to be the most prominent risk based on what we see. But when the model comes into contact with the real world, um, that gets tested. And we found out in several, uh, several times that we've deployed that we were wrong. And the most prominent risk was something else. For example, with GPT-3, we were convinced that misinformation was going to be the, the most important risk. And it is very important. But in practice, we saw that um, spam was actually a much bigger risk uh, that we had to focus on. And the same thing happened with DALI as well. So I think it's really important for these models to come in contact with real users, with the real world, and understand where the friction is, where the limitations are, and iteratively build in mitigations. And the mitigations we're building are, not, are probably not future-proof. Um, but it's, it's a place to start, and it gives us enough knowledge of where to go. Um, but at the same time, we need to think about um, how the complexity increases as the models become more and more capable. So, for example, with language models, now we oversee the output um, of, of the model by a human for sensitive use cases. And that's not something that would scale with more powerful and advanced models. So then we have to come up with techniques to help humans evaluate uh, the output of these models. And OpenAI has been working with other language model developers to coordinate on some of the standard practices uh, to figure out how to deploy language models safely. Fei Fei, same question, but as opposed to OpenAI, Human Centered Artificial Intelligence Institute, role of universities with industry, governments, plus the work you guys are doing. Yeah, great question, Reid. You know, safety is one of those words like health. Everybody wants it, but it's really hard to define it. Um, so uh, wearing the hat of the director, co-director of Stanford Human Center AI Institute, which we call uh, Stanford High, uh, we think a lot about what we really want for AI, for future AI. And we come to the word human-centeredness. Um, we focus on infusing the human-centeredness into every stage of AI research, development, education, policy work. Uh, obviously, we're universities, so we don't deploy products, but we hope that what we would inspire as applications will have an impact in productization downstream. So, so 
AI is not one thing. AI, you know, designing AI system is 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 really stages of uh, work decisions, and we believe that every stage of this AI development, uh, we need to infuse the ethics and human-centered values into this. Simplest way to put it, how do we define a problem? For example, do you, is your goal to you know, um, replace humans without consideration of all the social implications or augment human capability? That is, before you write a single line of code, you already are thinking about human values. The data, where does it come from? How do you uh, collect it? How do you ensure data integrity? How do you annotate it? There is a whole bunch of, you know, from fairness to privacy to, to just a whole bunch of issues and, and, and considerations. Then the algorithm itself, you know, how, how, is it safe, is it secure, does it, uh, you know, is it biased? And then the decision making using the algorithm, the inference, the, 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 the human, how does it assist the humans or, or, or um, you know, in other for, inform the humans. So every stage of AI development is, uh, needs human consideration and Stanford High is really trying to um, embody that process. And in this, uh, and as, it's not even a side product, a central product of that process is the people we educate, the students, the undergrads, the graduate students, when they come out of this, uh, you know, years of working or s learning uh, from Stanford High's courses and uh, uh, lab work, they become technologists or uh, business leaders or policy thinkers who understand the human-centeredness of AI.